good morning and thank you for joining this uh, joining this webinar this is the first one uh, that UPC have this year and today we are going to talk about echometer for the estimation of productivity index in intermittent gas leaf wells with uh, Sergio Caicedo. Uh, Mr. Caicedo holds a bachelor degree in physics and computer science from Simón Bolívar University, Venezuela, as well as a master in petroleum engineering from the University of, of Texas in Austin. He has 27 years of, of experience as a specialist in artificial lift, well productivity and software development applied to oil production. He also has worked as an instructor in oil production where he has trained 700 plus engineers in the companies where he has worked. He has published around 30 technical papers and he has worked as a specialist in artificial lifting in Venezuela, Kuwait, the United Arab Emirates and the United States. Mr. Caicedo was awarded with the East, uh, SPE Middle East Production and Operations Award 2015 for his technical contributions in artificial lift. Thank you, Sergio, for stay, for being here today. And please let us start with the presentation. Good morning, everybody. I'm happy to be here giving this webinar today. So let's do a short review about the company. Uh, UPC Global, we are expert in artificial lift. Who are we? We are leading and consultant company that offers strategic solutions in the area of artificial lift and production optimization. We supply hardware and software and provide training oriented to analyze and optimize the well's performance. Our mission is to satisfy our customers by providing integral solutions for the oil and industrial sector. We guarantee exclusive alliances with leading technology companies while offering high quality service supported by an experienced team of specialists in each area. Our vision is to become worldwide recognized leaders in the oil production business, always maintaining high health, safety, environment standards for our employees and operations. What is our impact? We have 20 years in oil industry, four bases in Latin America, business in 40 plus countries, exclusive representation in Latin America. Our services fill data acquisition, optimization, allowance, and elaboration of products, specialized trainings, presential, and the coming soon online academy, telemetry, and automation. Here you have a list of our uh, companies that we have alliances and our clients. So you can trust in us. So, Let's start with the webinar itself. So we're at the outline is going to have a, an introduction. We're going to talk about intermittent gas lift. We're going to talk about conventional plumber lift. We're going to talk about dynamic bottom hole flow pressure. The equations that we are going to use, how to compute the productivity index with this equation considering the, the artificial lift systems and using how to use production tests and how, how to use production tests to predict this productivity in this and how to use a committer. Okay, so um, let me see here for a second. For the continuous production method of natural flow, electrical variable pumps, progressive cavity pumps, soccer block pumps, jet pumps, the productivity index is calculated from the following data, static reserve pressure, uh, what is constant, bottom hole flow pressure, PWF, which is constant, and production rate, that is the test that we measure in the separator. However, in intermittent gas lift wells, the bottom hole pressure is a variable. It's not a constant, you can see it. it's a function of time. So the, its value is changing continuously. This permanent variation requires a special analysis. So Having a bottom hole flow pressure that changes in time requires special analysis. And that is the topic we are going to focus today. Okay. The permanent var uh, pressure variation is recorded in the wellhead pressure charts where the transient sense of the intermittent gas production is highlighted. 
The following treatment can be associated process can be easily appreciated in the charts we're going to see it. Liquid slug emulation with casein pressurization, liquid slug displacement when we are rising with casein depressurization, cycle production and behavior with that defined period that we call the cycle time. But before going to the charts, I want to see the difference between intermittent gas leak well and conventional plumbing because most of the uh, there are some confusions and that need to be clarified. Intermittent gas leak wells apply this in oil wells with depleted reservoir pressure. They have a downhole packer. We use external gas, so we compress gas and inject gas into the tubing. In case that we use a plunger, in this case, it's optional. Um, we are going to use a plunger that is about feet, feet long, which avoids to be stuck in the mandrels. Remember this one, we have mandrels. Um, and we have a controller at the, at the injection line, the gas line that is optional. You see that these two, by the way, in Maracaibo Lake, there are about one thousand wells in this, They're working in terms of gas leads, and we don't use the plunger, and we don't use controllers in the injection line. On the other hand, conventional plunger, the gas well, they are gas well that they have liquid accumulation. There are no downhole packer, no external gas, some injections, so you can think it's a natural flow because you are not adding or injecting anything or uh, pumps or whatever, no. We are going to use a one feet plunger, which is required to ensure the liquid displacement. This is very important here. And the control is required in the inflow line. In the flow line, we are going to install it. Let's see the completions and see. So we have uh, here is the intermittent gas leaf well completion. You can see that we have a valve here in the with a, so we have mandrels in the tubing. We have a downhole packer. So they had the injection gas. Meanwhile, and we have a controller that is optional. As I told you, we don't use this in Maracaibo Lake, for example. Meanwhile, in the other side, we have the conventional plug. As you can see, there is a, there is no packers at the bottom hole. The plunger is required. The plunger in this case is optional for the intermittent gas leak. There is no gas injection, and you can see there is no injection gas line in this case, okay? And we have control in the flow line, the production line. In the, uh, so when, in the case that we use control intermittent gas, we, do it, we use it for the gas line, not in the production line. So they have some difference. This is for gas wells that accumulate liquid mainly because we regard very high gas liquid ratios. So five thousand standard cubic feet per barrel or something like that. And these are for oil wells we can have 300 standard cubic feet per barrel. So it's completely different. Um, even when you see the, the charts at the well head, you are going to see they behave differently. Okay. In the intermittent gas leaf, the red line is the casing pressure. You're going to see how the casing pressure start increasing. Then you reach the opening pressure of the downhole valve that we use a special valve called pilot valve. Then even we are injecting a constant gas rate at the surface, the pilot valve is so big that uh, when it open it, uh, the pressure in the casing depressurizes, increases because uh, uh, the instantaneous gas rate in the operating valve, the pilot valve is so high that the pressure decreases even if you are injected at the surface. Okay. And the process in the casing repeats the compression 
when you are the compressing, it means that you are injecting to the tumor. When it's compressing, it means that the down hole valve is closed and you are uh, increasing the pressure, build up the pressure in the case. Meanwhile, in the tubing, we are going to see that when the, you are in uh, accumulation phase, there is no production in the flow line. If you open the, um, the sample uh, or uh, the sample valve to take a, a fluid sample, you are not going to get anything in, the, um, in this case. You are going to see just only gas. When the slot arrives, you are going to see a huge increase in pressure. Um, probably the increase in pressure is about 200, 300 psi. So that means that it is very high um, instantaneous rate. Then you can collect a sample in this moment. Meanwhile, you are doing, you are not going to see anything in the surface. So this is intermittent gas leak. Meanwhile, the uh, conventional plunger, you're going to see that the casing and the tubing pressure, they have very, uh, the, the, the shape and the pattern is very similar, which is very different in this case, the casing pattern and the tubing pattern, they are different, as you can see. Here, they are very similar. There is a differential pressure, but they follow more or less the same pattern. That is, in this case, we, uh, this is, the reason of this is that we don't have the, the whole pattern. So essentially, you are going to see a small difference between them. Okay. Um, when you have a normal pattern operation, this only means that you are operating without failure in the equipment. So the equipment is okay. But still something extra has to be done. We don't know if this cycle time is the best cycle time. No, uh, we don't know that in thermotech sleep, we don't know that in, com in conventional plumbing. So we need to know there is still a, a you have st a, still have chance to increase production because we don't know that if the well is producing in the optimal way. We don't know, you, we just know that there are no failures in the equipment. It's like when you have a, for example, a comparison of this idea, when you have a Formula One, then one scene is that the car is running and one scene that they are uh, tuning the car for the race to have the optimum for the car. So there are two different scenes. One is working properly and something else extra is optimized. That is different. So the chart just tell you that you are having no problems in the operation, but not, it's not telling you anything about the, the production is the maximum you can get. What are the equations that we are going to use for intermittent gas leaf? And what is the productivity index? And what is the importance of this? So in order to define the, the equation for the accumulation stage, this is important because during the accumulation stage, the productivity index is when you have the most important um, effect of the productivity in the student accumulation. When you are displacing displacing the slug, you are you are not uh, producing from the reservoir because the pressures at that time they are very small. But the main production when you are uh, intermittent gas leaf is during accumulation. So during accumulation, I'm going to get information on productivity index. So, in this case, we are going to define some variables. Uh, for intermittent gas leaf, the per, uh, depth to the perforation, then the depth to the valve, and then the column. I'm going to measure the column from the valve to the top of the slope. Why is it? Because uh, if I measure from the perforations, then I have a dead space here that I cannot produce. So it's not a um, good definition because having a, with that definition, with this definition showing here, with y is equal zero means that you have no column above the, the valve. If you are measuring from here, then you have to take uh, in consideration the distance from the valve to the perforations. So the best is to define in this way. When you have the, for the, uh, Conventional plunger, then you have to add something. One is the column in the tubing, and something else is the column in the annulus. They are not the same because the pressure of the one head is not the same. Why is that this reason? Because 
the gas has some preference to go to the casing rather to the tubing. So most of the gas is going to accumulate in this case because the, the perforations position, the perforations, look, pay attention that the end of the tubing is below the perforation. So most of the gas is going to accumulate here. So we don't have the same um, pressure in, in, at the wellhead in, in casing and tubing. So that's the difference. In, that is the reason of having different columns in tubing and casing. Uh, then we have to change the paradigm. We have to think about column accumulation. We, have, we, of course, we measure production, but when doing the analysis, we have to think about column accumulation. So when we are talking about column accumulation, then we have to define some uh, variables. One thing is when the reservoir pressure, when the bottom hole flow pressure is equal to the reservoir pressure, you got the maximum column that you can have of the valve. As you can see, and the bottom hole flow pressure can be written in terms of the reservoir pressure and the column above the valve and the maximum column. The, when you have bottom hole flow pressure here, there will be the pressure at the top plus the, the, the gradient of the column times the column above the, the, the valve. If I have a variation in time here, I will have a variation in time here. Okay? Then, the, since this was, as I told you, in terms of as if we are applying this to the Peter reservoirs, we, are not, we cannot use linear inflow because linear inflow is when you have the reservoir pressure above the bubble point. And this was usually you are applying this with depleted. So we are going to use bogen. But the problem with bogen, what you have here is bogen. In this, in this side, I have the rate. The rate that you are producing for the reservoir is equal to the area of the tubing times the change of the column in time. So this is Q. And what you have here is Q max. This is a conversion factor from barrels to the 6.62 barrels to feet, square feet, uh, cubic feet. And this is to take uh, days to minutes. OK? And you can see here, this is the bubble type. This is the bottom hole flow pressure of the reservoir pressure. The square of the bottom hole flow pressure of the reservoir pressure, but pay attention that the time is there. Alpha is this coefficient given by Vogel, usually it's 0 0.2 minus 0 0.2, but yeah, I can use um, the, the any value I want to use. Okay. When I use this equation and name the integrations which you can read in the papers and the reference I'm going to give you at the end. You end with a very uh, long expression for the accumulated column as a function of time. You can see that it's expressed in terms of the maximum column, which is given by here. The initial column that you have in a cycle, the initial column of a cycle is the, is the fallback of the previous. So if I have a one dozen column, and I have 10% of fallback from the next cycle, I'm going to have that the initial column is 100 feet. Okay? This is our pressure. And pay attention that the term of time appears here. This is exponential. This exponential controls the time for the accumulated column. For any time, I'm going to have an accumulated column. So, the productivity index, the accumulation time, the area of the tubing, and the gradient of the liquid, they control the dynamics. Pay attention. There is no other term that controls the Everything else is a constant for a given well. So this term, exponential with a negative, is controlling the, the accumulation. So in this graph I am going to have a accumulation is going to have this shape. Most people 
using the common sense, which is not a good idea. You have to use math because the common sense you are going to see. Most of people it is going to tell that the best optimum time to have a, as a, a correlation time is going to be 300 to 400 minutes for this case I'm showing here. But when you make the numbers, which is I explained in a detail in a intermittent gastric course, the optimum is not there. This, call, this red line is column. So maximum column is, for this case, 1,000 feet, approximately, more or less. But the production is this score, which is in blue. And you're going to see the blue scale here. So for this well, for this condition, maximum production about 62, 62 parts per day. And the optimum time is around here, about 50 minutes. Pay attention that if I am below the optimum time, I will lose production. If I am above, I will lose production. So I need to be here to be sure. Depending on productivity index, this is going to change. Okay? And you are going to see that in a uh, intermittent graphic course. If the productivity index is too high, you are going to see the change is very defined peak. If the productivity index is uh, low, it tends to be as flat as this case I'm showing here. So one thing is having the well cycling with a time of, for example, 100 minutes, I will have 50, 58 barrels, but if I have in the proper cycle time, I'm going to have 65. So uh, as I told you, this is the graph that I'm going to tell you what is the best accumulation time. Once I have this, I can optimize the well. How to, but for this, I need to have the productivity in this the J or PI. I need to have it because that is the, so how to get the productivity in the intermittent gas well. When you have steady state conditions, for example, for ESP, natural flow, and continuous gas lift, and soccer ball pumping, then you can use expressions. If you are above the bubble point, you can use the first expression. If you are in bold, you can use this. And if you have a, in a, above the, the result pressure is above the bubble point, but you are, your test is below the bubble point, you can use this. But pay attention that in this expression, we have a constant value for the bottom half flow pressure. So we cannot, but we know that the bottom half flow pressure is like this. When you take a, a downhole pressure survey, it shows you more or less this. By the way, we the way we get photo hole flowing pressure survey is completely different than in continuous gas lift. No, the procedure is completely different. But once that you get it, whichever means with a downhole gauges, with a survey, with a echometer, whatever, the shape of this is this is the accumulation stage, then you open the valve, you're going to have a peak, then you displace and again close the valve and repeat again. And you can see that it's changing with time. So we cannot use a value because the value is changing. And if you want to use a, a average value, let me tell you that computing the, the average value of this function is more complicated than the equation I'm going to show you. So bottom holes, uh, using an average is going to be a headache. So we have to, to be sure what we are going to use. But I can tell you that we cannot use this equation because we cannot use this equation and we cannot use this equation. So whatever you have learned in our courses of production and non-analysis, you cannot use intermittent gas. When, if we apply this column, equation that we, we can, using this equation, we can rewrite this in this term. So the productivity index is given by this expression. So um, this expression, you can see that there are some variables, maximum uh, level that you can reach, the accumulated level is here. So initial 
level when you're at the accumulation. So using this equation, I can get the productivity index. The problem is where you go to get the maximum column, the accumulated column, and the initial column. And what's the accumulation time? Because accumulation time is not the same as the cycle time. You have to take into account that there is a travel time from the top from, uh, to uh, go from the bottom to the top, which could be, depending on the depth, five to 10 minutes. We don't know yet. We have to measure that. We have to be careful with this. So we can use this equation using estimate from the production test or measure with the commuters. If we go to do from the production test, you are not measuring the columns. Then I have to make from the production test what was the expect. Uh, and it, um, I have to estimate the accumulated column and I have to estimate the initial column. And for that, I have to do some assumptions with the fallback and some uh, computations uh, you need to do to complete this. If I am using echo meter, I can measure what is the maximum column because I can measure the level for the um, static level. And remember, I have this uh, maximum is measure the, the static level from the bottom to the static level, not from the bottom. There, I can measure the accumulated level, I can measure the initial level. So, this is the way to do it. So from production test, I have to take into account the cycle accumulation times, the measure and the reported. I need to know how many cycles per day I have. I have to compute the slope border at surface. I have to make an estimation of the total fallback. I have to transform daily production into column per cycle. I have to here, as you can see, I have to change my paradigm of production. I have to think in times in terms of columns. And remember, it's not a static column. This is something that is changing all the time. When, I, uh, when I'm using echo meter, what I can use with echo meter, I can measure the column during accumulation. So I, don't, I know what is the initial column. I know what is the column just when you open the valve. I can measure the accumulation and the travel time. Uh, besides that, with the commuter, I can do a build-up test. So I can measure the, the permeability and the damage. And I can measure the static pressure, so I can measure the maximum column. Besides of this, I can take a check if there are holes in the tubing. So if I have a problem, I can determine there if there are holes in the tubing. So I can measure the maximum accumulated initial and accumulation time. I can measure this. When I have conventional plunger, I have no packers at the bottom, and I can measure this, but besides of that, I can do a plunger tracking. When you're using a commuter for conventional plunger, the, the microphone at the top can measure uh, the velocity of the plunger going up and down because uh, you can detect the noise of the plunger when, uh, when it's passing through the joints. You can measure and you know the, 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 the tuning distance, so the tuning length, so you can measure how often you can measure the, the velocity of the plunger when you are going up, and you can measure the velocity of the plunger when, it, when it's falling. In this case, it's important because you have an additional condition. You cannot have another uh, cycle until the plunger reach its uh, stop, its position in the stop spring. So it's important. Also, we can check tuning holes and we can measure the, the liquid level in the anus and in the tubing. This is an example of the um, echometer software. Uh, when you are doing the um, uh, surveillance of the, you can see here, 
This is the casing pressure and the tubing pressure at the well head. You can see here that the, 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 the shape is very similar because remember there are no packets at the bottom. So there is a small difference in pressure because the, as I told you, the casing, the, most of the gas goes into the casing. So this difference, especially in that. So the, uh, we can predict more or less what is the, 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 the slope uh, length that you have here accumulated. And you are going to see here when, the, when this peak is here is that the slope arrives to the surface. And this is what we call um, the post production pressure. You are uh, displacing the slope into the flow line. You can see that is when the slope arrives to the well head, you can see here this uh, that the pressure in the, in the casing does not drop so fast. It starts dropping as fast as at the beginning when you are displacing the the, the slug in the flow line. Well, here, the speaking pressure is because the, the well head is, uh, acts as a restriction for the liquid. Why is that? Because the instantaneous rate of the intermittent uh, type of, uh, even intermittent and plunger lead, the instantaneous rate is very huge. Okay, here you can see that is the slug velocity and the slope uh, position. When you are in the accumulation time, the, the plunger is falling, and I can track the position. Here, reach the downhole spring, stop spring. It, it keeps the position until you open again the, the valve on the surface, and you are going to see the position. In green is the velocity. Uh, you are going to see when it's, it's falling, the velocity is about 200 feet per minute, while it's uh, going up, it's about 600 feet per minute. So um, there are some constraints. But here, in uh, while tracking, there's still, I know that the equipment is working, but the optimization of the this cycle time still pending. Okay, so a community provides an excellent hardware and software for intermittent gas lift and conventional plunger well surveillance. We can use a community for optimizing this uh, this well when having a clear understanding of this intermittent gas lift methods. Therefore, even intermittent gas lift and uh, conventional plunger are widely applied worldwide. These methods are usually misunderstood oversimplify and all the corresponding equations will not or not use. There are many potential unnoticed opportunities for production increase in this world awaiting for intermittent gas lift experts to be identified. So here are the reference, the, uh, the paper I have in 2001, you can download it for um, uh, one petrol for SPE. And also a paper from Jay Lee, uh, Roland, and McCoy. That is the, the using of the echo meter for com conventional plungers. Well, thanks for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I also have a good news for you today. Today, attendants will receive a promo code by email for our online virtual classes are coming soon. That is not as the continuous gas lift courses. So um, any question that you can have, please. Thank you, Sergio, for your presentation. And um, let me check if there is any question. I, until now, I think no. So um, let me check. No questions yet. So I'd like to add that um, that uh, people who attend this webinar is going to receive a record of the presentation in the next few days. And also we want to invite you to visit our web page. That is uh, upcglobal.com. I put this in the chat. 
Just a minute. Okay. And as you say, uh, in a few days we are going to have available uh, a new a new division of UPC Global. There is the UPC, UPC Academy. So people who attend this webinar, as you say, are going to receive a promo code. So uh, you will receive their information in your emails. So if you have any question, please let let us know. I think there is no questions. Okay. No. Yes. So thank you so much for being today. Um, and uh, we are going to let you know about uh, the rest of our webinars in the next month. And uh, if you need to, to contact us, you can you can uh, call us to this number or also to our email. There is salesupcglobal.com. Let me write down. Do you want to add something else, Sergio? Um, well, um... I hope that you find this presentation interesting. The, um, this one I show you is uh, that these uh, our uh, courses are uh, they are uh, with a high quality. Imagine that this is the free web seminar. How good is going to be our courses? Okay. Thank you. So just that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day and see you soon. Oh, one moment, please. There's a question here. Okay. Jorge, Jorge Proaño, thank you so much for the presentations. The topics we covered were very clear and useful to understand. The methods to optimize production use the uh, intermittent gas lift and conventional plunger lift. Thank you. Thank you for attending this webinar.